Shalom, this is Levi Shore. Welcome back to Swing Torah. Today we're going to learn about Parsha Chukas, and we're going to learn about healing and the copper serpent. All right, so let's uh, jump right in. So we're going to start on uh, chapter 21, and we're going to start with Pasuk uh, 4. And it says, Vayisu mehor hahar derech yamsuf lisbov es eretz edom, vatik tsar nefesh ha'am badarech. So it says that uh, the Jewish people, they journeyed from Mount Hor by the way of the Sea of Reeds to go around the land of Edom. And the spirit of the people grew short um, on the road, with the road. So um, let's give a little, um, we're going to go back to the last Parsha, and we're going to go to the beginning of this Parsha to get a little context of uh, what's going on. So Miriam, who's the sister of Moshe, who's the sister of Moses, um, she was a uh, Nevi'ah. She was a prophetess. And she was speaking with her brother Aaron, the Kohen Gadol, Aaron a Kohen. And she was saying that uh, she didn't like the fact that Moshe had separated himself from his wife, that he was living in a different tent from his wife. And she didn't understand the level of Moshe's prophecy, that he was the greatest of all, of all Navis, that he was the greatest of all prophets. And he had such a high level of uh, Nevi'ah that he was always communicating with Hashem and he was uh, communicating with Hashem, Pani Mal Pani, face to face. So she didn't understand this. She wasn't saying anything malicious, but it was still considered by Hashem that the lush and horror that she was speaking. And she was punished with Sarah. She was punished with this spiritual um, skin disease. And all the Jewish people waited for her for seven days. So then after that, we see the lush and horror of the Meraglim, of the spies, and that they spoke lush and horror about the land of Israel. And the Torah calls this term Diva. And, um, and because the Jewish people accepted this Lashon Hara on Tisha B'Av, this became a day of mourning, and both temples would eventually be destroyed. Both of the Beis HaMikdash would be destroyed on this day, on Tisha B'Av. So two incidences of Lashon Hara. So then, in the merit of Miriam, there was the Be'er Miriam. There was the Well of Miriam. It was this miraculous stone that had holes in it. So a vin uh, uh, Earlier on, Hashem told Moshe to strike a rock, and he struck the rock, and holes formed in the rock, and the water came gushing out of this rock, and this rock became a source of water um, for all the Jewish people in the Midbar for 40 years. But after Miriam passed away, the water stopped flowing out of the rock, and at the beginning of this Parsha, the people are, are, are fearful, they're upset that there's no water, there's no miraculous water, and they complain to Moshe, and Moshe gets upset, and he strikes the rock instead of speaking to the rock as um, Hashem and I instructed him. This is really complicated, so we're not going to go into that so much. And now we just leave. We see that we leave um, a place called Hor Hahar. It's a double mountain. And this is where Arna Cohen was Nefter, where he passed away. And I think this mountain is located above Petra in uh, modern-day Jordan. And I think they, they have a, I don't know if this is the exact... Um, place, but there's a kever there that they say that that's the kever of Arna Cohen. So in Aaron's in Aaron's merit, there was the Ananiya Kavo, the clouds of glory, and there was these seven layers of clouds. So there was one cloud on all four sides. There was one cloud that went on top as like a roof and then protected um, the Jewish people from the harsh desert sun. And then there was one cloud that was underneath and it was like a beautiful cushion and flattened out the way for the Jewish people. So this was a, a miracle done in the name of Arna Kohen. And then there was the pillar of cloud by day that the Shekinah of Hashem went to lead us and there was the pillar of fire by night. Okay, so these Ananiya Kavod have protected us from uh, stepping on any snakes and scorpions, which is gonna be very important very soon. And because after Arn was Nifter, these clouds went away and then we didn't have this miraculous protection of the clouds. So we see that that's the beginning of this whole incident. So Rashi's going to explain what does it mean, like what is this expression of uh, tiksar nefesh? And we see this expression, um, the kitsar nefesh, the shortening of the nefesh, the shortening of the soul. We see this in Mitzrayim in Egypt that the Jewish people were described as having this shortness of uh, the nefesh, shortness of the soul. So Rashi's going to actually explain it here. He's going to say, shekol makom shetim sa kitsar nefesh mikra." Every place which you find the shortening of the spirit in the Torah, in the Torah Shabbat the Mikra, the written Torah, every time you find that expression, Meforah Shambam Katra, 
and it, it, it's, it states it stated clearly there with regard to what it grew short. Could go on like the teaks are nafshi behem, like in a soul, and my spirit grew short with them. Well, could go on our example, the are nafsho ba'amal Yisrael, and a soul grew short with his travail of uh, Israel. So the cold of our hakasha al adam no fail bo lashon kitzor nefesh. And that the expression, the shortening of the spirit, applies to anything that is difficult to a person. So, like a person upon whom something disturbing falls, a trouble comes upon him, the ain daito rechava, and his state of mind is not broad enough. So, the kabel oso hadavar, to accept the thing, the ain lo makom besok libo, and he doesn't have any room within his heart, la gor sham oso hatsaar. For the pain to reside there, for the pain to live there. So, so uv devar hamatriach, and about any disturbing matter, no fail lush and godel, an expression of largeness, shigadalhu, if a great thing, a great trouble, the chaved al hadam, and it weighs down the person. Could go in, for example, the gam nafsham bachala vi, and their spirit, it, it bloated me. So, gadla alai, it was too great for me. So it's interesting. So Rashi is saying that when there's something that's too big, when the pain's too great, when the, the trouble seems overwhelming, that this uh, anyone experiences this situation of kitsor nefesh, of the shortening is because of the spirit, his, his mind, his consciousness can't accept this. The pain's too much for him. So so then the people they say say they say lama he'elisunu memitzrayim lamus ba midbar. Ki ain lechem ve ain mayim ve nafshenu katsa ba lechem ha kalokel. And they say, Why have you brought us up from Egypt to die in this wilderness where there is no food and there is no water and our soul is at its limit with this insubstantial food, this kalokel food? So it's really fascinating because, right, so the, the Be'er Miriam, the well of Miriam, so Moshe at the beginning of this Parsha gets it working again, even though Moshe and Aaron are going to be punished for this and not being able to enter Eretz realm. But the miraculous water is flowing. And the third miracle, the man, the manna, came down in the merit of Moshe. So they still had this miraculous food and they had this miraculous water, and yet they're complaining that they have no food or water. So what is it? So, so Rashi says, he says, they they complained against Belokim of Moshe. They complained against God and Moshe and Moses. Hishu Eved Lakono, and they they equated a, a slave, a servant, with his with his owner, with his master. They, they said, oh Moshe and Elokim, Moshe and God in the same breath. So they said, Lama He Why have you brought us up? Shenehem Shavim. Like both of them are equal. Like both of them equally brought them up. Not that Hashem did all this. So, so then, uh, let's see, let's go on further. So they said, V'naf sheinu katsa, and our soul is at its limit. We can't take anymore. So they said, V'naf sheinu katsa, af ze lashen kitzor nefesh. This also is an expression of this kitzor nefesh. Now what's this lelechem ha kolokel, this unsubstantial food or bread? Rashi says, L'fi shahaman nivla ba'ivarim. So the man actually did an incredible thing. The mana did an incredible thing. The mana is pure tov. So most food we eat is a mixture of tov a mixture of good and evil. And our bodies absorb the tov in the food. And then the ra in the food, the, it becomes a postcellus. It becomes a waste and it comes out of our bodies. So this is the normal way in the natural world right now we, we eat food. So the good in the food we eat, our bodies gain strength and energy out of. And the, the ra in the food, it's postcellus. It, the body uh, gets rid of it as waste. But the man was this miraculous food from Shemayim, a lechem min Shemayim, not from earth, not a bread from the earth, but a bread from Shemayim, and it was all tov, and the body completely absorbed it. But we see here that this was scaring the people, and they say, balechem ha kolokel, with this um, insubstantial bread or food. Lefisha man nivla beivarim. It was the mana was absorbed inside the parts of the body, karauhu kolokel, and they called it. Um, insubstantial. So Amru, they said, Asid haman hazeh shayif tach, shayis pach b'meinu. And this mana is destined to blow up our innards, our insides. Kalum yesh yelud isha. Can there be one born of a woman, shemachnis, who who eats something ve'eno motzi, but doesn't uh, doesn't excrete anything? 
And, and they were worried that they were in such a supernatural existence, even though this, I think this 38 years, 38 years they've been eating them on. 38 years they've been drinking from the well. But they, they, there, was a, there was a fear because after the Lush and Hara, after the incident on Tisha B'av, instead of entering Eretz Yisrael on that day, there was going to be another like year for everyone to pass away who, who accepted Lush and Hara, and then I think the final year then finally going in. So they instead of going into Eretz Yisrael, they turned back into the Midbar. They turned back into the desert. And this was this this was too much for people. The, the pain and, and the punishment and the, the being so close to going into Eretz Yisrael and turning back to the Midbar, this, was, this overwhelmed them all. So even though they've been eating this man for 38 years, now they, they were worried that they, they were going to explode from this man. So let's see. So, Vayeshala Hashem Ba'am, Ace Hanachashim Hasarafim, Vayenashku Esa'am, Vayamas Amrav Me Yisrael. So then Hashem, he sent, and it's interesting, it uses the word for God of Hashem, the merciful aspect of God, and not Elohim, the, the judgmental. So, like, even though it's going to seem like it's judgment, Hashem, it's very important to note here that Hashem is sending this as mercy because he's using the name Hashem. So Hashem sent um, the people into the people, or against the people. He sent them that these um, these these burning snakes, or the snakes, the burning snakes. But Yanashku Esaham, and they bit the people, and the people died, and a large uh, multitude from Israel died. Okay, so it says Ace Hanachashim Hasarafim, the snakes, the burning ones. Shesorfim es adam, they burn a person, be'eres shinehem, they burn a person with a venom in their fangs. Okay, and they bit a person, and this is the nashku es ha'am, and they bit the people. So Rashi says, Yavo nacha shilaka al ha'potza'as diva. Let the snake, who was, he was punished, he was stricken over bringing forth the diva, the lush and hara, because the snake was involved with the Yetzirah speaking Lush and Hara to Chava, to Eve, to get her to eat from the Eitz Das Tovara, to eat from the tree of knowledge of good and evil. So he spoke this Diva, this Lush and Hara. So V'yipara Mimotzi'e Diva. And then he can take his due from the people that, um, that, that bring forth this, this Diva, this Lush and Hara. So Yavo Nacha Shiko Haminin Nit Amin Lo Ta'am Echad. Let the snake to whom all varieties of food taste alike, because now he was punished to only eat the dust. And vayipara mikafuye tova, and he can take it from these ungrateful people. Shedavar echad mish tane lachem, whom a single thing transforms itself lechama tamim into many flavors, because the man had this miraculous quality that it could taste like almost anything you wished it to taste like. So it was one thing, this man, and it could taste like in this variety of taste. And the snake who was punished for his lush and horror, and he would now eat dust and have no taste to anything. Now he's going to come and punish the people that have this amazing mind that they're not appreciating. So, um, so vayavo ha'am el Moshe v'yomru chatanu ki dibarno v'hashem v'avach his palel el Hashem v'yaser me'alenu es hanachash v'yis palel Moshe be'ad ha'am. So the people, they came to Moshe, and they, uh, they, they were doing teshuva. They knew that they had sinned. They made a mistake. So we have spoken against Hashem and against you. So pray to Hashem that he removed from us the snakes, and Moshe prayed for the people. So then, this is really interesting. So Hashem says, V'yomer Hashem a Moshe, A'asei l'cha saraf v'sim oso al neis, v'haya koh hanashuch v'ra oso v'chai. Now Hashem says to Moshe, he says, Make for yourself a burning one, and place it on a pole. So make one of these venomous snakes and place it on a pole, and it will be that anyone who has been bitten will look at it and live. So Vayas Moshe Nachash Nachoshes Vayasimehu Al Hanes Vahaya Imna Shaka Nachash S Ish Vahibi El Nachash Hanachoshes Vachai. So Moshe he made the snake a copper and he placed it on a pole so that so it was that if a snake bit a man, he would stare at the copper snake and live. Now, what's going on? Okay, so people are speaking Lush and Hara. They get bit by this venomous snake. So Moshe puts this uh, this copper, uh, and, and Moshe made a drash, too, that the word for Nachash 
snake is nachash, and the word for copper or brass is nachoshes, and it's the same um, the same root letters. So Moshe made a, a drash that it should be made out of copper. So what's what's going on? Why why is it people are speaking Russian hard? They're getting bit by these venomous snakes, so they look at this copper uh, serpent up on a pole and and they, and they live. So what what is going on? So Rashi's going to ask this question. So Kol Hanashuk, anyone who's been bitten. So Afilu Kelev Uchamor Noshko. So even if a dog or a donkey would bite him, Hayen Nizok, he would still suffer harm. Umis Nav Ne Vacholek, and gradually he would deteriorate and die. So Ella but the bite of the snake but is very quickly to kill someone so anyone who had been bitten will look at it just looking at it but the bite of the snake Nemar, it says that he would stare so it was that if the snake bit a man he would stare for one bitten by the snake did not become cured quickly, unless he stared at the copper snake. And he needed an intention while he was staring. So, a rabbi said, So, could it be that a snake made by Moshe, may meet, can cause death, or give life? Ella, Bizman Shahai Yisrael, Mis Taklin Kalape Maila. Then any time that Israel would look upward, uh, and they would uh, subject their hearts to their Father in heaven, then they would be cured. But then they would waste away. So what is Hashem teaching us, and what is the miraculous healing that went along with this copper uh, snake or serpent? So Hashem is showing us, we've had this string of parshas and the complete destruction that Lush and Hara brings upon us, speaking badly and evil about other people, is the absolute destruction of the world. This is what caused the original Avera with Adam and Chava, with Adam and Eve, eating from the tree of knowledge. This is what brings death into the world. This is what brings sickness into the world. So speaking badly about others, it, it, it causes great harm. Now, one of the reasons is this Kitsur Nefesh. When we don't appreciate everything that Hashem is giving us, like when we don't see the miraculous things that Hashem is doing for us and all the great things that Hashem is doing for us every day, then sometimes we could be jealous of other people and then we can speak badly about other people. But when we feel content, when we're Sameach Bechelko, when we're happy in our portion, we have no reason to speak badly about anyone else. And the antidote for all this, and especially in an age of social media and Twitter wars, it's insane to start speaking badly about other people because of political differences or religious differences or anything. What we need to do is just see, feel good, and appreciate what we have. Look and appreciate what's great in other people. So what? We don't agree politically. They're probably doing it for good reasons. They're not in some other political party because of bad reasons. They probably they like the good things the other political party is saying. You like the good things this political party is saying. Look for the good in others. Look for complimenting others, look, you know, to, to help others, and that's the antidote. So looking up at this copper serpent and seeing the destruction that Lush and Hara can bring and thinking about it and contemplating and seeing that everything is coming from Shemaim, everything is coming from Hashem, and that's the antidote, and that's the secret of the healing with the copper serpent. Hope you enjoyed it. Great Shabbos. Hope to see you back soon. And sweet and good Torah.